All right, what's up, class? This is Optimus Fields at My Living True, and we're at block height 641,535, and the current price is 11,070. And uh, Nick is running a little late. He'll be showing up soon. He's finishing up drinks with Quarantine for Bitcoin Magazine. So if you're new, go check that out. And uh, without further ado, let's just have everyone introduce themselves. So uh, first, we got our our very very own pre coiner or new coiner actually. I don't I don't mean to insult you, Anastasia. But our very own new coiner, Anastasia. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi guys. I'm new here and I'm here to learn. Let's go. And then uh, next we got Coin Icarus. What's happening, everybody? I'm the host of the uh, Fun with Bitcoin podcast, and it's always a pleasure to be here, to be learning and having fun with fellow plebes. What's up? Thanks for coming back, bro. And uh, next, we got Jackie, our very own favorite yo, commie killer. Yo, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we got Jestifer. Hey, everybody. Uh, stay strong, stack stats. And uh, yeah, I'm just a. Bitcoin enthusiasts and lightning tinkerer. Let's go. Next, we got Nico. What's up, guys? My name is Nico, CEO of BitVault.com and host of the Crypto Creamers. For sure, for sure. Uh, next, we got Katie. What's up, boys? Good to be here again another week. I'm just uh, a girl learning about Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, next, we got Silver Jim. Oh, hey, what's up, folks? Uh, so the surf report for this week is waves are coming. Yahoo. But, We're going uh, surfing tomorrow and Saturday. <laughs> what's uh, How big are the waves? Oh, it's uh, it's picking up. It's like three foot now, and it maybe get four to five foot by Saturday. It should be fun. Ooh. Nice. All right. Uh, next, we got an abysmo. What's going on, guys? Big time BTC kindergarten fan. Thanks for having me. Let's go. And uh, we got Dylan in here too, but he's on mute. So, uh, all right. Uh, we just got a new guy in here. Academic, you want to introduce yourself or we're unfamiliar with you? If you want to talk, Are you a new coiner, pre coiner, Bitcoiner? All right. Well, uh, yeah, just chime in whenever. Um, so, as we all know, we're all Bitcoiners. We've all been watching the price this week. We got a really nice pump at the start of the week. And as I said in the beginning of the show, we're at $11,000 per Bitcoin. And I'm not going to lie, guys. It feels pretty damn good to, to break that 10 k Let's just hope we can hold it for a week. Uh, I'm not much of a... A charter but uh you know some of our twitter friends are and from what i hear from them as long as we can hold this price above like 10 10,600 or something like that on a weekly close then we're officially bullish going into the bull run and uh like we were saying earlier uh before the show started it's a little bittersweet uh as much as i want to see the price go up uh, I'm a sat stacker, a humble sat stacker over here, and I'm going to be honest, I could use a little more time to s s stack some more sat. So I, uh, I'm trying to fight the FOMO and, and just continue on my DCA, but uh, I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't do a solid little uh, bulk buy. So uh, I'm feeling a little better on my, uh, you know, on my, on my bags over here. But uh, what are you guys thinking? What what's your feeling right now, starting this uh, bull run, or at least this price pump? Just uh, unmute yourself and let's go. Big fat market buy. That's it. <laughs> Dude, I have a dollar 
85 cents in my bank account. <laughs> Bro, I, I have not, nothing. Like, I, it's always... You know, it's stacked that rope, but five. Yeah, right. that. To, to uh, card of the resistance. But it's like a so fuck, it it's like a fucking it. drug problem. I mean, it's like it's like it's stacking sats is like it's like equal as drugs, bro. Because you know, like drugs, like you're always gonna go buy drugs. Yeah, bro, bro. Every time I stack, I get that heat of dopamine that I keep <laughs> needing, and every time I need to stack more because it doesn't like affect me as much. And good thing is, uh, like. It's a good addiction, like kind of. Yeah, it's a good addiction. <laughs> you're like, you're fucking bowling in ten years, so it's a good addiction. So, I I swap every type of addiction for sat stacking. Like, I re addicted to something, switch to sat stacking. You're good because they will always say you need like when you're addicted to something. If you stop that addiction, you'll get addicted to something else, and you need to swap a bad addiction for a good addiction. You're you're addicted to heroin, swap it for stacking, you're still getting dopamine. It's like safer though. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't realize oh, yeah, like, how much of an uh, addict I was. Yeah, that, that yeah, that, that wasn't like a really real uh, example. It's uh, it's get, safer. Uh, I mean like drugs Yeah, it's drugs safer trading your, your future. Sorry. <laughs> no, you go you go for it, Jessifer. Uh the you you're like with drugs you're like trading your future for your present but you know for bitcoin you're stacking sats you're you're trading your uh your present enjoyment for for future enjoyment Wisdom. so it's you know long term dude it's safer until you get fucking charged by netflix and then you're like oh <laughs> fuck well, bro, you should, should have had be, more than a dollar. You should cancel that Netflix account and start stacking more, bro. Nah, Nico, Nico, you're yeah. telling me you don't split Netflix with four people, so you like pay a fourth of the price, dude. I pay, I pay for my whole family, bro. Man. <laughs> start asking, start, start tax, tax your kids, dude. Tax your kids. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Uh, so like, like you guys think I'm joking with the dollar eighty five. Like, oh I'm no, really I know you're joking. not. He he showed me the screenshot and he literally had a dollar in his bank account. Like, he, this guy's as all in as we can go. But uh, yeah, anyone else? What are your feelings? I don't know, guys. I felt nothing. This this pump. I was even like upset about it. I was like, whatever, price goes up, price goes down, who cares? I'm stacking. Like I literally felt nothing and then I was like, did I miss like did did I lose the the last piece of my emotional self? Like no more emotions for Katie. I'm bad pro but now I don't yeah, know. Katie is so down into this addiction that she needs at least twenty K to compensate the dopamine. Like, you know the... Yeah. But like I, I didn't feel happy. About, like obviously you're getting richer, price pumps to k you're richer. That's cool. But in the long term, you're actually losing if the prime price pumps because eventually we're gonna hit 100k, a million, 100 million. But the more we stay to 9k or lower prices, the more we can accumulate at lower, like more sats per dollar right now i think one dollar is 8k sats and before the pump it was like 10.5k uh, so it's currently you know, it's currently 9000 sats or 9079 sats yeah most yeah, of us like young pretty young in our 20s or so 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 when we discovered bitcoin we didn't have like huge capital to sell all our other assets and go all in so we're like you know being humble stacking sats as as we you know gain our wealth uh, but yeah probably people who are like in their 40s they're like yeah i bought in I, i'm fine i'm just i just want to get rich as quick as possible but we're like no fuck let give us hi we need to stack i completely life. agree with with uh, anita for sure uh like dude or katie oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> Just been having too much. My days have been crazy. I'm so sorry, Katie. I apologize. Anyway, um, dude, I started four years ago, uh, 
2016, the beginning of 2016 with, I think it was like less than $10,000 saved up. And, and like, mm -hmm. that was like a minimum fucking wage job and Bitcoin fucking changed my life completely. Like it just fucking like, like I started a business and, you know, I have small mining operation going on. Like it just completely changed everything, bro. bro. I'm so grateful to be here. Yeah, bro. same. I was a 20 year old immigrant paying huge bills for a lawyer and like trying to, you know, get a job that, that was not like legally under papers, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. But, and yeah, Bitcoin totally changed bro, my life. Like I'm 16 and I have more saving than basically the big, biggest chunk of millennials. Like Jack, we're gonna, Jackie, we're going to kill some fucking communists yeah, with those like, things, right? I hire a private army to rebuild <laughs> the Roman Empire and every commie that I found that will be executed by direct order of the <laughs> Wait, so, so I know it's so I know, uh, uh, my my living truth optimist and, and me are rooming together and we're gonna get fucked up as shit katie thank you so much for peer pressuring us and, when and you told Jim, me that like Jim. i bought the the ticket right after and optimist is like, are you sure and i'm like yes 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 dude don't worry i get yeah, the right? so i was like i dropped off of the call and then i see like an hour later you joining the telegram chat of bitblog boom conference i'm like I guess he already got a ticket because you know you get it in the email. You get the Optimus, invite. Optimus is like, dude, like I don't have a room. I'm like, Optimus, stay in my room. I'm getting a double bed. Don't worry about it. Just come. He's like, all right, I got the plane ticket. We're fucking going, a hundred percent. Yeah, shout out to you guys. Shout out to Bitblock Boom. We'll be you seeing you. Yeah, thanks, Jim. You you uh you made a, a good pitch. You you made it. You made it. Uh, you put in good light for us. You know what? It was actually Jim that fucking get that. It was Jim and Katie. But what what Jim said was so fucking wise, and it was like there is no other place to network like those things. You're gonna fucking love them. Something something along those lines. And it was so deep and so wise. And I was like, dude, okay, this guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. I have to go to this thing. <laughs> and well, you guys are really well. gonna you're gonna love it. You really are. No, I'm so hyped. It's like surreal. I'm I'm excited. Can't wait to meet you guys all in person. And uh Yeah, but all the other people that you're gonna get to meet. I know, right? Like we talk all the time. You don't get to talk to all these other people all the you will that at the, the you know, several days worth. So um, oh, I was good. gonna say something about this whole um price Yeah, yeah. Thing. Keep us on track, Jim. Uh, since you've been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> on track, I don't know. Um, for people listening to this, trying to learn about Bitcoin, um, you you know the, the toughest goal you're going to have right now is to try and get one full Bitcoin. For most people, you know, there's plenty of wealthy people who could easily get one or ten or a hundred, but one is hard for most people, especially most people around the average age of this group, uh, which I'm not in. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know, like one Bitcoin is going to be impossible for people to get in the not too distant future. And it's it's going to change the nature of, of how Bitcoin is perceived. And uh, people will be uh, trying to get a hold of as much as possible. And, and you know, for, for any of you young folks that can get even one full Bitcoin, let alone more than one, you're going to be set for life at, at some point, you know, especially somebody like, like Jackie's got decades of life ahead of them you know at 16 you haven't even started <laughs> so uh yeah this is awesome for you guys it really is and anybody listening and learning just try to get as much as you can as fast as possible before the price goes up because yeah. it's gonna go up gang. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie. gang jockey you're killing me uh coin Nickers, i saw you unmuting yourself a few times do you want to jump in Oh yeah, no. I, I just wanted to comment on uh, on Justifer's point um, that that he made. You know, just that you know, Bitcoin is a higher quality you know addiction. And uh, <laughs> to what Katie said before, um, I'm, I'm actually 40 and I'm still stacking sats, and I still want it to be low. We're we're not dead yet at this age. <laughs> Oh, oh, you crack me up. Oh, man. How about uh, Anastasia? 
what do you th- what do you think about this price movement since you're a, you're newer to the scene you're not as uh you're not as orange pilled at us and die hard so i'm wondering what you think about the this price pump i'm very sad because now it means i have to spend more money to get uh the same amount of yeah, sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah she gets it <laughs> well i think you're officially a bitcoiner now like yeah. you get it <laughs> i mean i mean like for me it's it should not be that volatile come on it's like i don't know we also- we have we have converted her yeah <laughs> next, next step becoming a toxic maxi and then well i can say maxi but I learn more as I go. Well, it's we... coming for the blood boom. Let's go. Yay. Well, we're all, also, we're all learning. Also, how do you pronounce your name correctly? What was that, Katie? What? How do you pronounce your name correctly? Um, uh, let me speak. Wait. Yeah, just say it out loud so Optimus would hear it. Oh, am I saying it wrong? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, anesthesia? Uh, uh. <laughs> anesthesia. Anastasia. Okay. I'll I'll try not to butcher your name. Yeah. Anastasia. Anastasia. Oh, oh, Anastasia. Okay. All right. All right. I got you. All right. That's how you man. It sounds good. All right. Okay. Yeah. So- and I'm super excited and a little intimidated at the same time because I do not know much and like everyone there is like so into it and I'll be like hi yeah, <laughs> just, honestly <laughs> honestly there's like this famous like Latin saying that says uh in and vino vitres which basically means in wine there is truth yeah so what that means is just drink a little bit and your inhibition <laughs> will go lower I grew up on Miami Beach I could confirm this <laughs> and you could talk to people. Trust me, it works very well. Katie, this a little side question. How are you treating my my Sophie in Toxic Ladies? It's so good there. I mean, Toxic Ladies has been a really cool place lately. We've been chatting more and, like, discussing all kinds of things. And girls are sending memes. It's hilarious. It's super cool. Is she, is we she, all, all, all or is she being quiet? being quiet? Uh, she, she's been pretty quiet, uh, right now but uh at the beginning she shared her youtube channel with us so we all followed her and she's super hot so good for you (laughs) i appreciate that thank you is there a price you're super super hot too katie come on come on now (laughs) is there a correlation between price and activity in toxic ladies nah not at all oh not yet all right well we'll have to do work on them Get them a little more toxic up in there. Guys, I just, I just wanted to bring up a point. Um, and, and Surfer Jim, I, I wanted to like kind of get your input into this. Guys, so the the and I'm coming from the mining side. The fucking hash rate just reached an all time high, even after the block reward. Uh, the the block reward got cut in half. Oh, so that. So fucking bullish because that means that miners, right, which is extremely capital intensive, even though they're getting half the reward, are still willing to invest in the equipment. Yeah, miners. So miners be like, I, I'm losing three k US dollars per month, and that's so I don't care. Like that's the spirit. Wait, what do you mean you're losing money? Like. Isn't it really profitable after they cut the reward enough? Like I know electricity and equipment to break even. It's really hard. No, dude. It just it it's all depends on your the price of electricity. Like my my ASICs right now are making between five to two dollars a day each. Mm-hmm. Well, that's There's- good. They're, they're profitable, man. They're profitable as hell. And I know some people that are getting, like, I had a podcast with uh, Ethan Vera and this guy named JP Barrick, and he's a fucking boss, bro. This kid's 23, 7,000 ASICs. Um, what the fuck? And each ASICs, like, $1,000 plus the electrical infrastructure. Like, it's fucking crazy. Like, my, like, dude, and the kid's younger than me. So I feel like shit. Because I have, 
have 2000 but they're not all mine only 200 of them are mine and um and dude like this kid has he he's he's basically made a six each in texas bro damn and point five got cut down to six point two five for finding a, a bitcoin block the miners didn't care they didn't care they just kept investing so uh, so my perspective is that the miners know something we don't okay and if they're willing to make that type of investment something's going on in the background and mind you bitcoin cash the hash rate has remained exactly the same since 2017. ethereum the hash rate has remained exactly the same as 2017. bitcoin has been the only uh the the only network the only uh currency that's hash rate has literally gone parabolic and the more hash rate the more chain security and the more value proposition uh man that's bullish. let's go I, I i dropped out for a moment but i caught the end of that and let's go i guess optimus is still not here um yeah there's actually i think that's why nick is late because he is uh, facilitating discussion on mining right now that's what they're talking about on drinks in quarantine today yeah all right I guess we'll, I'm cool um, enough to invite it. all right guys well my internet dropped off for it's interesting some so. people can hear optimus and some people can't hear right now i can't hear him i, 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 can, I can hear, hear i can hear him perfectly yeah yeah same. Well, all right I don't know. Things are acting weird today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Feds be watching. <laughs> right? right? They talk they're, your they're talking dude. Bitcoin. We must shut them down. <laughs> all right. They, they talk to your line, dude. I know, man. It's it's all my fault. Sorry, guys. Don't dox any information. Um. Well, before... So we have a lot of mining questions, and, and Nico will get into them a little bit. But um, we were just talking of the price pump and the coming bull market. And we have this question that we've been skipping for a few days or a few weeks, actually. And it is, what is Bitcoin derangement syndrome? And uh, I think it's a good time to lay it out because I'm almost positive we're going to be seeing a lot of it coming up. So uh, anyone want to chime in or, or should I hit it? No idea what that is. All right. All right, Nico. So Bitcoin derangement syndrome, there's a uh, there's very many uh, symptoms of it and it comes in very many forms. But our our favorite and best example is our uh, uncle Peter Schiff. So the Bitcoin derangement syndrome is essentially at a certain point, people seem to lose their mind over Bitcoin and all they can do is hate on Bitcoin or, you know, so they'll see the price pump and then they'll either lose their shit and, and just continue to say negative things about Bitcoin, even though their thesis is obviously wrong because the Bitcoin price is going up. Or they can come in the, the other symptoms of like the Roger Ver type where they see the Bitcoin network doing really well and then they'll just fight it in any way possible. So I've been joking about it for a few weeks now that uh, some of our very own Bitcoiners are about to fall for the Bitcoin derangement syndrome because you can see it kind of happening in some of our friends. Um, a lot of them with the like circular economy, you know, Bitcoin needs a circular economy or, uh, you know, Bitcoin needs better privacy and or, you know, the the very adamant Bitcoiners of uh don't buy Bitcoin unless you get it non KYC. And so it, it comes in a lot of different ways and number go up seems to make people go crazy in a lot of different ways. So uh, what do you guys think? You guys think we're going to be seeing a lot more Bitcoin derangement syndrome or do you think that um, we've done a pretty good job to uh, educate people and, and keep them off the path? I mean, like, it's saying that it's better to buy non-KYC SATs is just, like, well, it's true. 
I agree with that. I agree with that. The, the, the problem, the, the problem with that guys is that, like, for example, Bisk. Um, I had him on my podcast the other day. Um, dude, like, they're incredible, right? It's peer to peer exchange, and uh, you know that's what happened with local bitcoins, right? Local bitcoins because it was kind, of, it was centralized. Eventually, they forced people to do KYC. The same thing happened to Shapeshift. So, with Bisk you because it's a peer-to-peer exchange and it it leverages the power of multi-sig you're able to have non-kyc uh bitcoin transactions however once you start getting into bigger numbers like let's say you wanted to buy five thousand dollars worth of bitcoin or you wanted to buy ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin dude forget about it and let me add another thing on top of that is that when you buy KYC pre, uh, non-KYC uh, Bitcoin, it's usually at a premium. So I, I it personally, personally, dude, like if you're going to do some shady shit with your Bitcoin, dude, just just coin join it. You know, that's it. Or, or use the, the Samurai wallet, right? Whirlpool it, you know, and and, you know, then you could do some shady shit. Right. But like. Honestly, KYC is inevitable, man. The, the United States is putting so much fucking pressure. The Steve Mnuchin like literally went on live TV and lied to the whole fucking world and said that Bitcoin was being used uh, more to money launder and fund terrorism than the U.S. dollar. It's a blatant lie. <laughs> but that tells you, it gives you an insight into what the fuck these people are trying to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me Absolutely. just say, so... The problem with PISC is that I saw that there was like a bug, a security issue some time ago and wasn't that big, but they fixed it. So you, yes, you have the like advantage of buying non KYC SAT, but that's, but there's always that risk of uh, maybe it's not going to work, even if it's getting better every day. Plus there is no liquidity, like as you said, for bigger hoarders and the premium is kind of high, I like 10, 12%, something like that. And what I meant by buying non-KYC SATs, because like the only way is you buy it from someone uh, physically with cash, uh, you buy it on BISC, or you try and buy, I, I kind of buy it in, let's say in the, in the middle. So I don't give documents, but I still need to pay with a wire transfer. But since the exchange is located in Switzerland, they they don't ask me for documents. Okay, I I, 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 I don't think they store like they store the information. I, I, I know I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Rally Rally. Uh, I also had him on the no, podcast. Wait, uh, you're not talking about Rally. Okay. No, I don't know. Is that the name of an exchange? Yeah, that's the name of the exchange. It doesn't require KYC. Wait, write it right in chat. I'm gonna check it out because I'm talking about BT. And Look, let me yeah. let me let me post it on the thing because I had this huge conversation. They basically do the same thing as Swan Bitcoin, but um, but it's non KYC. So you sign up, you don't have to create an account, and right off the bat, you could buy up to five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Yeah, so basically, same thing as I do. I, I basically tell them how much I want to buy, where they're gonna send it, what's my IP bump, my uh, bank account number, that shit. I verify that I'm the owner of the um, of the address signing a message, and then I send the the save or wire transfer, whatever the fuck that is, and I get the bitcoins. And I don't know if they store like the name of the uh, on the account. I think they do, but uh, since it's Switzerland, I don't think like the feds have a lot of leverage on it uh, it's different jurisdiction so i mean it's you're not gonna be completely safe but at, le- at least you're not giving documents and, it, and i don't know if there if there is a way to send like um, wire transfers from an basically a bank account that is not your name like in, you can basically have a fake name connected to a bank account i don't know if that's possible it's Probably possible, a bit sketchy, maybe not worth the risk. But if you can do that and you're buying from a Swiss exchange, you just need a, a bank account in euros and you can do it from wherever in the world. So, like, 
Zwan Bitcoin is really cool, cash up, cool, but you know, unless you got uh, Jack, since you since you live in Italy, um, I would check out Rally. Uh, it's a non KYC uh, exchange. It's exactly the same as Swan Bitcoin, based in Switzerland. And it doesn't require any identification, any type of login, any type of email. What? So definitely check that out. Well, but guys, guys, listen. The, the KYC problem is a superficial problem, and let me explain to you guys why. Because the stricter this shit gets right like the more the crackdown happens and i know that all you guys are living through this especially jim fucking love jim um uh i'll send it to you right now jackie um yes. is that it's gonna force people to say i'm just not gonna go back to dollars and okay. now you have shit like cash app now you have shit like uh like uh crypto.com like with their premium uh premium cards or whatever that dude you don't even need to transfer dollars back to a bank account, right? And as the future progresses, man, my feeling, especially with Square and 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 and, and Cash App, you're gonna be able to make purchases directly with Bitcoin. So this whole KYC issue, man. Yes, KYC when you purchase it, but bro, you're just gonna keep it. You're just gonna hoard that shit. You know, like they don't have control after the fact. Yeah, right? the only the only problem like I have with that, you're right. Just they even if they know you have it, they cannot stop you from using it. The only problem I have with KYC coins, if they if they pull the same shit they pull with gold and basically yeah. say it, your gold is now mine. So that's the problem. Like, uh, obviously you don't want the the feds knocking on your door and be like, yeah, dude. Uh, Give me your coins and like that's that's not an ideal situation and there's no way of avoiding it like maybe it's gonna happen maybe you can avoid it i don't know so, if the excuse of i lost it oh so, yeah so jack so, so jackie like i guess you haven't dug deep into this so there's ways to mitigate that right mm -hmm. um I, I would suggest really reading up on multi-sig so I'll give you guys like yeah, my I, I have, I have multisig, but yeah, yeah. but I'll, like I'll give you my setup so you understand that like if the FBI came and raided me and they said, "Hey, give me your shit," right? I physically couldn't fucking give it to them. I have one of my I have my one of my twenty four words here in 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 Florida with me. I have one twenty four words in the Dominican Republic, and I have one twenty four words in puerto rico yeah. right yeah. so like even if someone wanted to come right and be like yo nick fuck you you know give me your shit i'm like dude i couldn't give it to you if i wanted to and cold card has this cool feature right because I, I even though i don't have the, the the 24 words with me i still have a cold card that's able to sign those transactions right and tw and cold card has this amazing feature where if you <laughs> enter a specific pin it breaks it completely right so if you if you set yourself up if you like if you really like uh it's called operational security um mm -hmm. if you really set yourself up properly there's different ways to mitigate that now that's one aspect the other aspect is dude logistically speaking you know how fucking hard it is to go from house to house and look for a piece of paper with 24 words on it it's very – dude, gold is different. If you have $50,000 worth of gold, that shit's fucking heavy, and that shit's hard to – that that shit's hard to find. Yeah. Right? I mean that shit's hard to hide, I mean, right? But if you have $100 million worth of Bitcoin, dude, you could memorize those words, and you can cross the border, and, and no one could tell you shit. You know? So, so, like, I'm not so worried about that aspect, Jackie. Yeah, just, like, my setup is – kind of similar i have a cool card and i have a multi-sig wallet and it's not that geo like geographically separated my private keys but i have them encrypted like the backup encrypted on sd and then i have paper backups even if i know i should switch to metal backups and then i have my call card uh on me with the brick me pin um perfect 
yeah, brick me pin activated. I, I I don't know if I should say this, but fucking I'm gonna say it. So this is a this is a trick you should do, and everyone that has a call card I think should do. So you memorize your pin and you memorize your phishing security mm-hmm. words, and then what you do, you have it in your mind. You don't need to write it down. But then exactly. what you do is you write down on a piece of paper your brick me pin and you put it besides your call card. <laughs> so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, dude, if, you open, if you open the place where I keep my call card and all the other shit, there is this piece of paper with the, the pin. Jackie, quotes. you tweet that and that shit will fucking go viral, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I don't tweet, it, tweet it right now, bro. Tweet he doesn't, right he doesn't now. want to blow his OPSEC on it, bro. Yeah, I don't want to blow my OPSEC on true, it. Make, but, make, a, make a pup. Uh, a sock puck, puppet account, bro. True. true. Yeah. I, I have it, won't, account. It, it won't have the clout. But um, let's let's get Katie. A- Katie, you you put some comments in the chat. Yeah, I'm just I just want to find the fat. First of all, non KYC coins don't don't are aren't being sold at premium. Uh, I talked to a bunch of OTC guys. Really? Really? Yes, they said that they were like, hey. So there were clients who came to OTC dealers and said, I want freshly mined coins and I'm ready to pay premium but they never follow through that. So like, it's not the case at all. And OTC guys don't, don't have like premium. You still pay fees when you buy on cash. App yeah, and- yeah, but, but Katie, hold on back up that I, I understand. I'm very familiar with that OTC market because that's how miners make their money. You still have to buy in bulk. You can't make small purchases in those OTC transactions, right? Well, well, there are OTC guys, well, there are KYC guys uh, who do um, DCA, but I'm talking about even like buying Bitcoin from your community, guys. Like I'm buying and selling within my community at Guadalajara Bitcoin Meetup. And mm-hmm. like today I met with a guy who needed to, oh, do you, you know, know. Do you know Lucho, by the way? He's the man. Yeah, I did. I, I did. just got his stickers and today. They're so sick. Yeah, we met a couple of times. Um, so there is no premium for non KYC coins, especially if you buy within community. It's pretty much you guys serving each other. So you buy, he needs to sell. You all sell and buy with no KYC. You buy at market price, like everybody's, you know, everybody's uh, winning. It's a win win. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's no any premium on that. And the second fight I wanted to fight is um, um, Base Cat. Um, Nobody lost funds because they had like special fund who reimbursed all the lost funds. So like BISC is really, really good company and uh, I trust them a lot and I think they're doing God's work. So um, I want to I just can, address that I they're very I liable. Completely, I completely agree with, I completely agree with Katie. Uh, BISC, the, 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 look, so the thing is they use multi-sig. Right, so it's it's incredibly difficult architecturally to hack them, right? Because you, as the user, right, are still controls one of the keys, right? So even if BISC gets compromised on their end, right? What? Yeah. Sorry, I got a YouTube video just played on me. Um, even if BISC gets compromised on their end, you still have your you still have your keys safe on your computer, right? And uh, a third thing that I wanted to address regarding buying KYC, non-KYC, like in my home country, there is not a single centralized exchange. So the only way to acquire Bitcoin would be through OTC guys just going to like Moscow City or finding an OTC dealer. So we are talking a lot about the U.S. here, but probably your listeners are all around the world. So like it's worth addressing that, yes, like you might have to go out of your way and find the way to acquire Bitcoin, which is probably going to be non KYC, and you're probably going to be, you know, somewhat happy about it at some point. Um, so yeah. But you can't do that at scale, Katie. Let's say I wanted to buy fifty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. I can't do that. Like the like uh, the only non KYC, like for example, like uh, like I know a couple Chinese mining pools, right? And they want to get rid of some fresh Bitcoin. Dude, they'll sell it to you. They'll sell it to you a little bit less than market value because they want to get rid of it so quickly. But dude, you, you have to buy at least 10 bitcoins at a time, you know? 
and then and then they, they don't care. They don't care. They're not going to KYC you. You just send them a wire. You know. So. Um, yeah, but w in the local communities, I'm absolutely sure that what you're saying is true. But I'm talking about like true volume. Like, if you want to make big purchases, like I don't think like I don't think there's like a middle ground, especially in countries that don't have that infrastructure in place yet. So, for the benefit of some of the like new coiners, pre coiners, could you could you all explain what fungibility is? Because you guys are sort of talking around it. But like non KYC coins having a premium, mined coins. Wait, wait, wait. Can, 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 we, we'll talk, can, can we get back? I just want to hear Katie's response to what I said, and then we'll answer you, Jessifer. I just wanted to say that like it's not like you can't do it at scale. It's just you know how far you you're ready to go out of your way. So obviously you can do things. You can find a way. It's just are you ready to do that? You're ready to commit your time and effort and if you do, good for you. Got you. And and in Colombia, two A three DX. What's the what's the situation up there? What's the situation down there? Because I know that they don't have infrastructure in Colombia. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, well, we have uh, only local bitcoins and a few other companies that that offer the the selling of bitcoins, but um, they are all KYC. Which sucks, oh, really? really? Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, so, Jessifer, you were saying something about fung fungibility? Yeah, you guys were talking about, um, you know, non-KYC coins having a, a premium. So, you know, coins that aren't tied to your identity. Um, and so can we just, like, kind of simplify, like, what that whole concept is? Like, what is what is fungibility? I think I have the easiest way to describe it through a historical event that happened Um before we all were into Bitcoin, there was a Silk Road um, after which the US government uh, had the coins. And at first they considered them like dark coins, but then after the government acquired the coins, they cleaned them up apparently uh, and sold them to Jim Drepper. So the coins used to be considered as dark coins or like dirty money, Thank but then the government acquired them and sold them to Jim Drepper uh so now they're clean at, coins at a discount so, mind you yeah it's huge yeah. discount <laughs> so Can there I, is this uh, that yeah. because the ledger is so um you know transparent. anybody can look at it yeah transparent uh there there was a rumor that we will have dark coins and clean coins um so it was it would lead us to a fungibility issue but this had been going around for years and it never actually played out to be the case. So, um, well, we definitely do need privacy tools such as CoinJoin and stuff, but I don't believe that fungibility is such a big issue actually. Yeah, I agree. Jim, you wanna jump in here? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'd just like to sort of make a distinction between the fungibility at the protocol layer whereby every UTXO is fungible with every other and Bitcoin doesn't care. And if you don't care, then it's irrelevant. Uh, KYC is just another um, another restriction placed on some human beings by other human beings have them that, who currently have the monopoly on power and violence. Uh, and basically the state, some government entity sets up a bunch of rules and say, if you live within these boundaries, these are our rules. And if you don't go by them, we're going to like arrest you or steal your money or kill you or do whatever. So KYC is just a distinction that some humans make. These coins we say are tainted. Oh, oh but wait a minute. All of a sudden now they're not right. Katie government says we washed them, What they do. They just proclaimed it's a yeah. joke. It's but, a total but... joke. KYC is simply a government made up bullshit like so many things government does and 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 i'll add and i'll add to jim like it, it's a losing battle they they cannot win this fight and the analogy that i can give to you guys is basically do you guys remember when um do you guys remember long distance calls yes yeah of course okay, i so do <laughs> you, you, would, you would call jim knows i remember you would call you know and you'd get charged an arm and a leg guess what happened the internet came around and guess what happened to those long distance calls they went free and you know who and you know who freaked the fuck out the phone companies 
because they're like, fuck, my long distance market is gone. Okay. Same thing happened to music, the record labels. All of a sudden, music just went online. Remember LimeWire? Remember that shit? Yep. And all of a sudden, guess what? Everyone could just fucking download music for free. And the record labels were like, no, that's not possible. At the end of the day, they couldn't win those fights. It, long distance calls became free. Music essentially, music is free. But, you know, now you have Spotify that has such a nice user interface that you don't mind paying the $6 a month, right? So at the end of the day, KYC to Bitcoin, it's dude, it's it's like a Band-Aid on a giant fucking gash. You it, 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 it doesn't work because it, it, it like KYC works if the fund, if the government has the capability to freeze those fucking funds and they can't, they can't do it. So even if they know that that guy's a narco terrorist and this is the fucking address, if that guy has the private keys, he could send them. To, to his buddy in Iran that has like, you know, and he's another narco terrorist and has nothing to do with the U.S. government. The U.S. government is like, fuck, no, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. You know, and that's part of the problem right now is that the, that the U.S. uses the dollar as a fucking weapon. And what you guys hear that as you guys hear that on the news, it's called sanctions. Right. So they sanction everybody up the ass and it fucking hurts because the U.S. is the world reserve currency. Right. So with Bitcoin, dude, even if KYC, it's, it's just like you're putting a bandaid, even if you're like, no, like you can't send Bitcoin to this person or it's illegal to send that shit to fucking China or to Iran or to whatever, to Venezuela. You can't send that to Venezuela, dude. You can because you have the private keys. If you don't have the private keys, guess what? You can't do shit. Even but, the, US, the fucking U.S. government, they cannot do shit. They can look at the address and say, that's a bad address. But then you're like, fuck you, coin, join, whirlpool, suck my dick, right? <laughs> so, yeah, dude, like, fine. you're right. The only problem I have with KYC, because obviously what you do, you, you buy from a KYC exchange and you get, uh, you like, tinted, let's call them tinted UTXOs. And then you coin join them, you use whirlpool, so you mix them. They don't know where they are. Like, they're basically clean. Let's say they're basically clean. The problem is, and then the government cannot track your money, see what your stash is, uh, see what you use them for, and that's awesome. The problem I have is that they know that you name and surname bought that quantity from that exchange. So let's say. In one year, you bought two bitcoins off of Cash App. Federal government is gonna know about that. And if we go into a tyrannical state, like let's say tyranny, and and the government is coming after you, you can all like say, hey, yeah, dude, I have multi sig. They are in different part of the world. You cannot do shit. I coin join them. Well, they're gonna fucking kill you. That's the problem. Who? Who? Who's gonna kill the you? Government, bro. You live in Italy, man. I live in the United States. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck's gonna do that? And think about the logistics of trying to do that, yeah, man. It's true. I I only fear that the mob slash or the government is gonna come after you because the mob government same thing. Yeah. Okay. But because they know how much you have and they're going to come after you because obviously you own them and they don't care if you have them coin joined in a multisig. Like it's the $5 wrench attack. Give me your money or I'll fucking bash your head in with a wrench. Like, but I physically can't give it to you. That's yeah, the and, they, and then they'll, yeah, and they'll, they'll go like, uh, oopsie Bonk. daisy, pump. <laughs> in the head like they they go oh you cannot then you're dead oh and 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 and, and, and by the way by the, the way problem is not that they cannot like they can access it or is it punishable the problem is they know you bought it at some point so unless you prove to them that you actually don't own them anymore because let's say you bought shit with it they still will know that you have them somewhere and they also, still them also somewhere. yeah uh, jackie try to come to my crib um i'll just yeah. i left the picture yeah that that's 
Damn, yeah. that's so cool, Gonzo. It, it, it's America. Yeah, bro. Um, but I mean, yeah. dude, like, like <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, man. But like, some dude comes to my house with the fucking wrench, bro. I'm gonna fucking AR his fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'd I'd agree. Like, I I see both sides of this because um, I'm I'm right there with Nico. I I kind of feel like. Uh, the KYC is, you know, like trying to hold back a fire hose with your hand. But I'm also very, very paranoid from, uh, you know, historical, um, like past events. And I, I too kind of am one of those persons that's concerned with uh, like a 6102 on Bitcoin. But like, I understand that the logistics of trying to you know, get all the Bitcoiners to turn in, in, you know, their Bitcoins is very unfeasible. So, I mean, I, it might be that I'm just being lazy here, intellectually lazy. And I'm just like, yeah, like I'm trading some privacy for convenience because I've basically done most of my stacking with KYC coins. And I, I, in, unless I find an easier way, like I'll probably continue to do that. And, just kind of be what nico says like yeah like come and take it because uh Dude, but, but but like man like jackie like i don't think i don't think it's as big of a problem as you think it is bro because look, look, look what happens man like look let's say the united states outlaws bitcoin or let's say they're gonna seize bitcoin you know what you know what you're gonna do you're gonna leave yeah. and you know what another country is gonna do hey we love bitcoiners over here right yeah because it, it's 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 all about like it's literally economics, right? So yeah. like the United States won't allow that to happen. They don't they don't want to lose that leadership. So they're kind of stuck in a fucking they're stuck in a pickle. Because if they outlaw it, guess what? The whole Bitcoin industry is gonna leave the United States, and that's bad for the American economy, right? And so it's like theory man, of it all. So it's 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 very it like dude like it, it's it's like the analogy that I brought up earlier with iTunes uh, I mean with the music industry with the long distance industry and how the internet just completely fucked those guys and just made the world a better place now the internet is coming for finance and you know what the music industry and the fucking long distance uh market we're just little tiny teddy bears, right? The financial industry is this giant fucking dragon, bro. And Bitcoin is this little fucking bear poking it with a stick, dude. Because you're fucking with the most the most corrupt enchufados. Um, Colombia, could you translate what that means in English? I don't know the English word. Um, um, you're, you're dealing with the most enchufados fucking um like people in the world uh yeah probably like you don't you don't worry about as much as uh, colombia what's the word for enchufados in english like jack in i don't know i don't know um, what would you say shady <laughs> no no it's not shady it's it's uh fuck what is uh, la la como la, la, el significado. Coño, como el tipo está enchufado en el gobierno. O sea, tiene, o sea, tiene, tiene conexiones. Ah, eh, eh, o sea, como like a hookup. La... Uh, okay. A hookup, a hookup, a hookup. Most yeah, connected. Hookup. Yeah. Exactly. Connected, exactly, connected. That's the word. Yeah, like, I, uh, I probably worry more about uh, this uh, than you, because obviously you live in America, you have the Second Amendment, Basically, someone. I don't know where you live. I don't know if you have stand your ground. I don't know. Miami, baby, Florida. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. uh, we have casket. We have casket. So if if someone steps on your like on your lawn, you can basically shoot them if they yep. threaten you and your good yep. shit. That's it. Here yep. in Italy, it's a bit different. Basically, we have uh, almost like gun laws as good as the U.S. We can have everything except like silencers and automatic guns. And but the rules in which you can use them are different. Like we don't have such thing as stand your ground or everything we got there. So and since Italy, you know, as 
an history of you know tyranny it's not that um i'm not that safe but as you said like italy becomes against bitcoin i just eat myself into switzerland and i'm good so exactly man you go to switzerland you could also buy a citizenship for uh in uh, nevis and uh, kits you could buy an american citizenship citizenship as well believe it or not katie you can buy get you a passport uh yeah. yep katie man I, I, love, I love russians dude russians are very resourceful <laughs> um so um yeah man like it's just jackie like if shit gets shady in italy man you just leave and the beautiful thing about bitcoin i was listening to a podcast from tales from the crypt and he was interviewing this guy named vj i forget his last name but your party. i didn't listen to that i just listened to that nick so you know what i'm talking about right yeah. and he was basically describing how his whole family's wealth what he sold they because they wanted to leave from india to the uk and his dad had to sell all the fucking gold all the all the family property and whatever into gold and they had to get on a plane with oh, yeah. all the whole family wealth in a bag full of gold to get on a plane to go to the UK. Imagine if the fucking customs officers fucking found that shit. Their whole wealth, their, their whole everything was gone. Oh, with yeah. Bitcoin, with oh, Bitcoin, yeah. it changes everything. It changes everything, dude. You don't even need to transport the physical words themselves. You could just have it on like a Proton Mail or like whatever encrypted. Yeah. And you just have the passwords and you just walk with the passwords. And then when you get to the other side, you decrypt it with the password, man. It's, 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 it's unstoppable, dude. You can't stop this. Yeah, it's, it's easy. To, like, you can, be, you can easily memorize the seed if you, um, like... Dude, I, can, I, you, can you imagine putting yourself in that position, though? Insane. You, you have your whole family wealth, and you know that you are defenseless. Once you get in that airport and go through customs, if they, that if they wanted to uh, confiscate your gold, they would take it and you can do nothing about it. Like, you're absolutely right. Bitcoin changes the game a million percent. Yo, j just just to know, how much is an American citizenship? She doesn't say, well, fuck, she doesn't say. I'm $900,000 for a green card. Yes. Nine hundred thousand. I think you do these Russians, man. Resourceful. I, I, I thought more. Yeah. I might. Yeah. I might be. I might be a little bit of in love with Katie. God damn. <laughs> you know you got a problem. Katie, that was a joke. <laughs> um, I think this is a a good segue into um a question. So, or our next question. Um, so I was talking to one of my friends. Well, a group of my friends, I, I, I got them in a group uh, message because the price was pumping. And uh, I'm like, all right, guys, this is like my obligatory 11K tweet. I've been telling you guys about Bitcoin yeah. since like 4 to 5K and you guys still haven't bought any. But now we just we just hit an 11K. So you guys should be DCAing into Bitcoin, you know, buy some weekly. And uh, one of my friends was like, look, this might be a dumb question, but when do you think that bitcoin will be accepted as an official currency in any country let alone okay. in america and like i i think this this chimes in perfectly because we're talking about it being outlawed but like the flip side of it is like we're already seeing uh cases <laughs> where bitcoin is you know already becoming somewhat legal and and more allowed in and even in america and, and a lot of other places like last week we just had a court case in dc consider bitcoin as money and so we can already kind of see this happening slowly but surely but uh let's let's speculate a little bit what do you guys think yeah. on let the me, flip side uh, let me Wait. just what i already said before so okay a government recognize bitcoin as money or not officially you don't fucking care because the government says Bitcoin doesn't is it isn't money. Bitcoin doesn't care, so you shouldn't care. And Agreed. if the government recognizes Bitcoin as money, you like doesn't change a lot. Maybe it does, it does well, dude. It, the it, taxes. It well, yeah, it taxes, everything. but it doesn't affect you on like you using it. 
you can see the green. Oh, the, the the only the only obstacle right now guys uh like forget about which you know what the banks say and any news whatever comes out unless they change the tax law right bitcoin will not be considered a currency because you cannot like for example if i go to optim if i go to nick and i'm like yo nick I'm gonna fucking sponsor your car, bro. I'm gonna put Bitvolt <laughs> by your Porsche, dude. Everything or whatever. I'm gonna pay you in fucking Bitcoin. Guess what? I have to pay capital gains on that. Yeah. And that's exactly why I'm moving to fucking Puerto Rico. But I spent a lot of time in Puerto Rico last year. What did you say, Katie? I spent a lot of time in Puerto Rico last year researching for Act 22. Yep. Uh, Act 22, 3% capital gains, baby. That's where I'm moving. My girlfriend's already living there. It's cool. It's pretty cool there. Yeah, but I, I just want to ask something in regards to taxes. So um, let's say that Bitcoins, like the, the, the developers that are trying to make Bitcoin private and not only like, uh, you know, that right now it's not private, but you can achieve fungibility through um, a coin join or mixing. So if we achieve a Bitcoin as a private coin, um, I don't see people paying taxes and I don't see the companies paying taxes to the state either. Like they basically don't report how many how much money they make and they don't report how much they pay their employees and they put employees to the government how much they earn so because obviously everything is private so the government can do shit so man I'm, I'm telling you dude there's two things in life that you can't avoid it's death and taxes bro, no, so big, that, no, bro I bitcoin never, fixes this bro i never <laughs> pay taxes on my I will never pay taxes on my Bitcoin. Oh, I pay, I pay, dude. Hell yeah, I pay, dude. I, I, I yo, listen. There's one thing about <laughs> the United. There's one thing about the United States that, like, you have to understand, and you don't fuck with Uncle Sam. Yeah, you don't fuck with the tax. <laughs> I, I heard you. <laughs> the IRS with with man is <laughs> licking his lips at what Jackie just said. He, no. he just admitted he doesn't pay taxes, dude. You're just gonna hear a knock on Jackie's door. And, um, no, no, no. He's in Italy, bro. He's in Italy, dude, bro. He's not man, even an adult Italy. yet. He's not even an adult yet. He doesn't make Italy, money. Italy, Italy is the shit, dude. Like, bro, it's so laid back, bro. But here, man, like, dude, I'm telling you, you don't fuck with Uncle Sam, bro. I, I heard an American you say Uncle you can Sam. fuck with terrorists, you can fuck with militias, you can fuck with uh, cults, regional cults. You don't fuck with the tax man, though. Like, no, bro. Uh, Uncle Sam, dude. Uncle Sam, you don't fuck with him, bro. They'll I fuck too so hard. If I, ever, if I ever pay taxes on on my wealth, I I authorize you guys to bomb my house because, I, like, that's so dumb. Why would you pay taxes? Nah, fuck that. Because I, because I have a business and I have to operate legitimately. Yeah, yeah, you have a business, okay, but if I have just my stack, I'm not paying taxes. I do. I can't like you have to understand, dude. Like I have, I I own my own home, I own a car, right? I own like assets, right? And if I just say I'm not paying taxes, it, like someone's gonna catch on, and be like, okay, why is this guy not paying taxes and have has all this shit? You know, like this doesn't make sense, right? So like you you have like dude like you have to pay taxes, bro. Like I understand the whole like libertarian aspect of of Bitcoin, where it's gonna be extremely difficult for the government to keep track of that for sure. But like, bro, dude, like I'm telling you, man, you can't avoid fucking you can't avoid taxes, bro. Let's but, let's hear Jim on this one because I know he's gonna get a Jim rant on this one if he yeah. can hear us. Yeah, I don't know. You got to rephrase. I forgot how you phrased it in the beginning. I thought of something. About, uh, um, it was, was well, you... we started with when do you think Bitcoin will be accepted as an official currency? But oh, right, uh, we, right. we kind of have neandered towards paying taxes on your Bitcoin and or right. whether Bitcoin fixes this. Hmm. Yeah, so the official currency thing, that's 
That's hard to say. You know, you got to think about your time horizon. It's kind of irrelevant if you have a long time horizon. If you're young like Jackie is, you don't have to think about that anytime soon, that's for sure. Um, whenever some country adopts it, if that does happen, um, it, it'll it'll be because people are using it everywhere and, and they have no other choice. The fiat currencies are all going to just get inflated to nothing eventually one day. So uh, it's it's likely to happen at some point, um, uh, whether it's the United States or some other big country adopts it first. Who knows? Um, I, it's it's the world is way too crazy to try and figure something like that out. I can't even envision how the federal government would would hold and distribute Bitcoin and use it as money to pay for their operations. Jim, do you uh, way too many corrupt people that would want to steal it? Like in Venezuela, they get they get Bitcoin. Like, do you think the people see the Bitcoin? No, the Maduro regime gets it. Jim, do so, you uh, do you agree with my statement of you don't fuck with Uncle Sam and you can't avoid death and taxes? Yeah, no, not totally. So it, it depends on what you mean by fuck with Uncle Sam. You definitely can't avoid death. Um, you can definitely avoid taxes, uh, and you can even do it legally. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, you want to put into that, that's different. That's different. You're legally taking an avenue to like pay as, as less tax as possible, but you still have to pay Uncle Sam. Uh, so there are plenty of taxes you you can't get out of paying, like through buying gas at the gas station or food or whatever else, you know. No, but I'm thinking in, income, income tax, income tax. Okay, but people don't pay income tax all the time. They make tons of money. That happens regularly because you just you just spend it on things that the government say are write-offs. And if you have enough of them and you spend it correctly and you itemize it correctly, you don't pay any taxes, no matter how much money you make. Dude, then That's I get not impossible. Fucking- then I guess I'm a fucking pussy dude, but like I'm fucking well, terrible. No, it's that's not it. No, no, hold on. Like everybody's a potential target to this group of thugs that have the monopoly on money and violence, the government. So if you get a large enough target and somebody in that organization has the authority to issue letters and subpoenas and whatever and get you mixed up in legal proceedings and starts to try to control your life or steal your wealth or take away your freedom because you're not doing what they say. Uh, everybody runs that risk. And depending on how you run your life and, and how you present yourself to them determines how much somebody over there gives a crap about you. Because there's a, way too many people for them to go after. Everybody, everybody, if given the chance, is going to try to avoid paying some taxes. Whether they think they're doing it legally, whether they know they're not doing it legally, if they think they could justify it someday, if they ever got audited, they'll try. Most people will try. Uh, you know, if their defense is, well, I thought that it was fine. And then if they get caught, generally all they can do is get fined. They have to Most people, you know, you know, it's bullshit all day long, but it's not necessarily the end of the world, depending on, again, what you're doing. If you break enough of their rules, uh, to a large enough extent, you become a much larger target and it's worth it for them to go after you, especially if they have resources they can steal. So if you got a lot of Bitcoin and they think they can get it and you're a big target, yeah, you, you could be a problem. Most of us are not, including me, as much older as, as I am than all the rest of you guys. I don't have a giant amount of Bitcoin. I, you know, I only got into this thing a couple of years ago. So like it's only so much money I can throw at this. Uh, I got a lot of bills and what whatnot. I wish I had hundreds of Bitcoin, but I don't, you know, and I probably never will because at 11,000 per one, it's not going to be easy to get 100. So the point is, you know, like, am I a big target? Are any of us a big target to a bunch of crooks that are looking for big pots of gold that they can steal from people? So like, I don't think you, most, most of us have much to worry about, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't you know, abide by their rules to the extent you agree with them or you, you're afraid not to break them. You know, like everybody's got to throw the line wherever. Okay. Everybody I, I, breaks a law every day. Everybody. I, I, I Grandma understand. breaks a law every day. <laughs> she just doesn't even know it. I, I understand. It's the way it is. I understand what you're saying, Jim. Yeah. No, you got to decide where you want to draw the line and how much risk you want to take. But we all take risk every day. There's nothing you can do about it. And we all I'll, do pay taxes. I'll, I'll they just say, it in ways you can't avoid. I'll just say that I have a. I'll just say that I have a, a, a like a, a target on my back. 
I'll, I'll just we leave all it have a target. If you have a bigger target, then you need to worry more and you need to be more careful. That's the that's, way that's why I'm like pay taxes, bro. And, and if you're going to and if you're going to Puerto Rico to what? Hey, look, I live in New York State. I can't wait to get out of the state. And when I leave, I'm never coming back other than for a visit. Bro, this you know what it is? You know, the rules I got to follow. You, in the know, you know what it is, here. bro? You know what it is? I fucking every year I have to pay fucking 39 percent of my fucking income, bro. So I, I moved to fucking. Well, you, need, you need a new accountant. Yeah. Bro, it's no, bro. It's, it's you want to you want to know? Dead straight, man. Because the, if the right accountant, depending on your business and the way you file things, you shouldn't. You know, anybody. If you have a business, like all right. So maybe I'm assuming some stuff. I th- I thought you did at some level, but if you don't, it's not as easy. But if you have a business, you can write off so many things. No, legally. I know, I know, I can, man, and I do, dude. Obviously, but like, right. dude, it's just. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, it, dude, like once, once, once they have a magnifying on, because I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen to, well, to people, uh, yeah. people that Again, are close. You know, it's, it's a function of whether one, one or more individuals within the government operation ends up with a computer screen that shows your name on it and says, go after this guy or however it even happens. Mm-hmm. It's literally, sometimes it's a crapshoot, sometimes Somebody makes a phone call, but it still has to be somebody has to initiate an investigation into you. And there's only so many IRS agents, and there's way more people. Can I? Can so I try to? people are quick. never gonna. Yeah. I mean, no, I was just gonna say, can like this is a good conversation, but can we get the topic back towards more like Bitcoin stuff? Wherever you want to go. Wherever you want to go, dude. It's your podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, Optimus and Nick. No, you're good. You're good. It's it's all good. Like I, I don't mind. But uh, Optimus, let me, see. let me see what we got over here. All right. So, uh, I'm not really familiar with this one, but the next question was on the Ledger hack, and uh, I only brought it up because last week we brought up Ledger a few times as a um, a decent wallet for noobs. So, is anyone familiar with the Ledger hack? I think Jester kind of has a little idea on what happened last week. But if anyone knows what what exactly happened, oh, yeah, man. so so yeah, it's tricky because uh, yeah, so we've got like a hardware manufacturer, hardware wallet manufacturer, that uh, their database of their customers like got hacked. So so now the like their their customer base that we probably know has Bitcoin because they bought a Ledger hardware device. Um, that that includes like their name, uh, their a- address, and phone numbers and such. Uh, so so now that is out in the ether. So um, if you were part of that, so yet now you have to like really worry about your your operational security, your your opsec, uh, because now you're you're part of a group that could be targeted by you know someone that wants to you know, launch a $5 wrench attack. Um, maybe uh, like Jackie's tips about uh, the the gold guard might come in handy. Those, those types of things. Uh, but, but yeah, it, uh, I think what I've noticed because of the ledger hack is that, you know, your, you know, personal private information like has a lot of value associated with it. As soon as you become familiar with Bitcoin, because like you are your own bank and you are you know responsible for the security of the value stored within your bank which is your savings um so so this is a this is a big one um and so really i think the tips to like come away from that are if you're going to buy a hardware device use a po box um Absolutely. or you're about to move maybe make a couple of orders of hardware devices um that would only be associated with your old address um so so that way uh you can benefit other people by having some somewhat of an, an anonymous hardware device in the future yeah so uh, actually coin Icarus and i covered this um and i don't know if coin Icarus wants to jump in on this but uh it, it was a, it was an a- api vulnerability it was nine thousand five hundred um basically ledger customers got compromised and it's exactly what just said 
um, their addresses, their email address, their first and last name all just got exposed into the ether, exactly what Justifer said. But uh, in terms of the $5 wrench attack, that's not so much of a concern to me. What's more of a concern to me is the social engineering aspect, right? Because all of a sudden, when you have someone's address, when you have someone's name, and when you have someone's phone number, then you can find them on social media, right? So you can engineer an attack where it's like you could pretend like I'm the person's grandma or I'm the person's friend. And I'm like, hey, you know, send me five, send me five hundred dollars, send me six hundred dollars. I'm in trouble. Right. Because that's a lot easier than breaking into someone's house and trying to, you know, fucking use violence. Right. If you social engineer, you know, you don't have to use violence. It's just you're just trying to sweep the person, so to speak. That sounds chill. Super chill, Ledger stuff. So, uh, uh, I think Jessifer covered it pretty good. Don't, don't use your home address. And, uh, I think that's definitely a mistake I've used before as a early Bitcoiner, not knowing much about privacy. What do you think about, um, like people like, let's say cold card who, and I think Trezor does it as well, that they wait a certain amount of times and they trash all the people's records. Do you think it's still safe? Like if you wanted to order a cold card to your house, but you have no other option I knowing mean, that they'll destroy it. So, but for security, send it always to a, to a proxy address, like for good measure. But what if you don't have like another address? To send it like, to? like, um, I don't know if there are stuff like that in America, but here in Italy we have basically some apps where you basically register and then you can get uh, packages anom anonymously uh, sent to like bars, shops, and and you know like little shops here in the city, and then you can go and take them, and that's it. So you don't have to provide your actual address and you don't have to have a P.O. box. And yeah, you can just tell them to ship it to a shop and then the shop can give it to you. Oh, okay. Nick, well, most U.S. post offices will accept general delivery. Uh, you just got to go make sure of it. Like you can have just send it to your name, general delivery at a, at the post office near you, and go pick it up. You don't need a post office box, especially if you're not doing a lot of stuff. Um, while I'm speaking, uh, one of the other good ways you can get some of these devices is at a conference, which many of us will be at. So bring some money and buy some devices directly from the manufacturers in out of their hand. It's a, a little bit safer. Hmm. Wisdom, wisdom. Um, also, I think uh, this is a good time to uh, bring up, like, the. I think we kind of touched on it last week, but we kind of skirted around it, and uh, why, you know, privacy isn't a crime. We talked about it earlier with fungibility, but uh, if you are new to the space, you should definitely, first of all, take your coins off in exchange and secure a wallet with your 24 seeds. And then once you get a little more comfortable with the tech, you should try to coin join. So we have uh, basically two competing implementations right now, which most uh, you know new coiners would use, which is uh, Samurai Wallet or Wasabi Wallet. And uh, there's some contention on, on those uh, competing products. But either way, you should be coin joining your coins. So as uh, Jackie was saying earlier, that if they do try to uh, track you down and search your UTXOs, your Bitcoins, at least you have some, some form of plausible deniability. And as well, you know, maybe consider getting that into a multi-sig wallet. And if you're a little more technical, you can try to use join market and also run a node. We told you last week, you guys need to be running a node so that you can verify your own transactions but further, so that you're not leaking your data onto the internet, you can qu query your own node and check your own coins via your own node. 
And yeah, privacy isn't a crime. Anyone want to go in on a why people should be concerned with their privacy? Especially, uh, the, uh, yeah, Optimus, I think you really fucking nailed it. You said perfectly, man. You you really covered every aspect. Let's go. Very- well, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> well, we have we have a few, one more or like a few more questions, and then we have some mining questions. But uh, this, yeah, get, get it, Nick, get it. No, I was just going to say, um, from the Fidelity news today that happened, um, I texted my mom, and I was like, um, you know, because she, she was amazed at one point because uh, I sent her a tweet that um, of all the companies that were sponsoring Bitcoin 2021 in L.A., and she saw Fidelity, and that surprised her. And she was like, oh, Fidelity's in the this internet money? And, you know, now that Fidelity just, posted that uh investment thesis i sent it to her and i was like oh send it to our neighbor as well who asked um me about bitcoin and immediately my mom was like hey can you like if i give you some money can you buy me some more bitcoin and i was like let's fucking go like i love that shit dude that 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 actually made me so happy because i've been trying to get her to buy for months she bought a couple dollars like five bucks worth at 10k but sub 10k, I was trying to get her to buy again, and she was like, "Oh no, I don't want to buy until I, you know, make. I, I want to make money. I don't want to lose it." I'm like, "Oh my god!" So then I had to wait until now, and then also I told her the price was 11k, and she got excited. And then I literally before like I was on drinks in quarantine, and this, I had downloaded Cash App and Blue Wallet on her phone, and I showed her like how to buy. And, you know, I told her, like, keep your coins off this. Like, tomorrow uh, we're going to, you know, go through the process of writing down the 24 words. And um, I'm going to get her on Blue Wall first. And then eventually I'm going to get her, like, a cold card or something. But, like, baby stuff. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you a question, Nick. Uh, do you think that, uh, like, the Fidel- Fidelity News gave bitcoin like a an air of respectability for your mom and so she doesn't think it's just like her son dealing with some internet coin it's like oh wow absolutely like that that definitely helped like legitimize it for her because she's like wow maybe you know maybe there is something to this you know magic internet money absolutely and I'll, i'll just add to what nick is saying like my uh my girlfriend's dad um, he's a pretty wealthy individual and I've been pitching him. I've been pitching this guy Bitcoin for, for like three years now. And, um, and dude, he just doesn't, you know, just, he's like, what is this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Open, open your Charles Schwab account. You see the GBTC? You just bought Bitcoin. So obviously it's not as good as, you know, as, a as you know having real bitcoin right but at at least it's what nick said it's like a step in the right direction Mm -hmm. and one of the things i really i think was bigger than the fidelity was um (laughs) my neighbors down the street who are good friends with my parents they're really wealthy boomers um like my mom went on a walk with her and she was like oh so nick's into that bitcoin thing right can he can you and him come over and have him explain it to me because i'm interested in buying some and i think once my mom saw someone that like her age was buying it and like she's like oh well maybe there is more to this like like i don't know like whenever like i tell my parents about bitcoin they're like they they write it off so easy they're like yeah you know whatever that's just you know someone you know Nick Nick's young. He doesn't know what he's doing. He'll he'll get out of Bitcoin eventually. But then it's like, oh, my other wealthy friends that I respect a lot are getting into Bitcoin. Maybe I should too. Hmm. So number go up is just gonna get everyone to get on the Bitcoin train. But uh, before we go too far, Jessifer wanted to add a few words about uh, the privacy and fungibility. So let's let's let him. Jump yeah. Up. Yeah. Uh, so like from like a common law perspective, like there's this, there's this old case where, 
uh, someone like went into a store and they stole all the money in the cash register. And uh, for some reason, the store owner knew like the the ID code on like on the the money that was stolen. And you know, at some point later, someone went to go buy some goods like from the store, and the store owner like looked at the code like on that dollar bill or whatever and they were like well this was part of like this is one of the stolen dollars out of this and so re- like rejected rejected that money and so that like that comes into uh, like fungibility because you know one one dollar is suddenly not worth the same as another dollar with like a different you know tracking number on it and so, so fundamentally, those those two those two dollars or those two bills, like, were no longer um, had they no longer had equivalent value. And so, like, what we're trying to do with with privacy in Bitcoin is maintain fungibility, meaning that each Bitcoin, each UTXO is equivalent to another UTXO of the same value of the same denomination in Bitcoin. And so that's a really important piece to maintain. Other, like if you don't have that, then you start getting certain UTXOs uh, for, for Bitcoin or certain Bitcoin transactions are rejected as saying that's not money or that was some part of some dirty scam or whatever, which, which uh, really interferes with the unit of account piece of money. So you can't... Uh, you can can no longer say that you know this product this good is worth a certain amount of bitcoin because what if some of that bitcoin is tainted and you say that's no good so that that really disrupts an entire role of money so it's really important to participate in some of these collaborative spends uh like some of these coin join products uh like like wasabi and uh, with Whirlpool, where where you're engaging in a in a spend with uh, other parties, so that uh, you can't uh, you can't uh, tell the difference between like inputs and outputs. Uh, you you can't tell like whose is whose at some point, which means that all of those outputs have equivalent value, and so like if you can't tell the history of things. For example, like a like a mind coin, a mind coin has no history. Like that's a, like that's a super Im- important thing. So so uh, engaging in the, some of those privacy practices, those collaborative spends, those coin joins, um, is important not only for privacy, but also for fungibility. Because you know Bitcoin is trying to become money, and that's the most important thing that we have. Um. I think that's a really good segue for uh, our last question. Well, the last question I have here, and if we have enough time, we'll go into the mining questions that we have. But um, you're talking about uh, fungibility and uh, collaborative uh, coin spends. And uh, the question we have is, uh, what is Taproot and what will it bring to Bitcoin? And the reason I uh, bring it up is because I'm personally not too familiar with uh everything that taproot will bring but i do know that it will help with uh some privacy aspects and some scaling aspects and from what i understand that um what you just brought up justifer taproot will will benefit because um it will be using like a new script and and therefore you'll be able to hide some of your transactions a lot better in a group but um Anyone a little more familiar with, uh, you know, some benefits of what tra- Taproot might bring us with the the next next? Uh, uh, absolutely. So it basically Taproot mostly benefits multi-sig transactions. So you won't be able to tell, you won't be able to differentiate a, a multi-sig transaction with a regular transaction, right? So that kind of there benefits not only the true holders but also like Cash App, for example, every time they withdraw, you know, it they use a three of five, right? And you can clearly see that on the blockchain. Coinbase, same thing. 
no one uses Coinbase in this chat, I hope. But, you know, um, mostly in, in those exchange hot wallets, they use uh, they use multisig. And with Taproot being in- implemented, even though it's going to take a long time because of how Bitcoin is designed, you're not going to be able to differentiate or the chain analysis companies aren't going to be able to differentiate the difference between multi-sig transactions and regular transactions. So it's just going to make their life a living hell, specifically Brian Armstrong for selling his soul to the IRS. So, um, yeah, go fuck yourself, Brian Armstrong. Beautiful. Uh, anyone want to add a few words or Katie, Katie's got a, a question in here. She, uh, said that we should start with what is a BIP, a Bitcoin improvement proposal. So, uh, I guess if you're new to Bitcoin, uh, you might not be familiar with how the protocol gets upgraded. And as Katie said, uh, you put in these proposals called BIPs or Bitcoin Improvement uh, Protocol or what's it, Proposal. And uh, the way that we basically get them into the network is someone proposes an improvement and then the the node users will basically either adopt these improvements if they're, you know, if they see that there's a benefit after a a pretty long peer-reviewed process and then uh it'll get implemented and there's various ways to implement them but at the very basic minimal understanding of a bip it's just a bitcoin improvement proposal and someone will propose it i think it's protocol by the way okay there you go and uh yeah people will propose them and as a user you adopt them but uh yeah. Let me let me let me add a little bit to that. So part of uh, Bitcoin's um, oh my god, I forgot the word. But part I, I would I'm just going to use a different word. Part of Bitcoin's resilience, and a great example of that is what happened with cash uh, with uh, Bitcoin uh, Bcash. Um, Bcash controlled the majority of basically they they were a huge mining conglomerate. You know, they, they controlled a large portion of the supply of Bitcoin. And Roger Ver had a, had a large portion. And Jihan, uh, Jihan Wu, the CEO of Bitmain, was making the majority of, of ASIC miners that were mining Bitcoin. And basically, they wanted to increase the block size. And all the nodes said, guess what? No, I'm not upgrading to that. So why did I bring up that example? So even though Taproot is a good idea, and if you go on on uh, Bitcoin Core uh, GitHub right now, everyone agrees. All the big developers are like, this is a good idea. The problem is, though, is that because of how Bitcoin's designed, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's going to take a while to implement. It's going to take at least two or three years for everybody to upgrade their node. And some people might not even want to upgrade it right there's still people running bitcoin uh bitcoin core 16 right so um so you know like that's that's the and the the thing about taproot is that you need the majority of the network to be running uh the new the new update for for it to be for it to be viable in terms of of more privacy beautiful Jessifer, Katie's Katie's yeah. pretty busy in the chat. Maybe she'll jump in next. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Katie mentioned uh, what this means for Lightning, um, and we mentioned that it makes like transactions appear like multi-sig transactions, um, and that's super beneficial for folks that are opening Lightning channels, like myself. Um, so. You know, it's uh, oh. it's got some privacy nuances to it. Um, so so you wouldn't be able to tell that I was opening or closing a channel versus a regular transaction where exactly. I was spending exactly. the entire value. Um, so I could have theoretically a lot more private transactions, which is a huge huge boon 
to privacy and to fungibility. Beautiful. Katie, you're pretty busy in the chat. You want to just speak it? Sorry, guys. I'm working. I'm just putting ideas in the chat. For, uh, for well, to bring. I'll, I'll answer for you if you want, Katie, about the backwards compatibility. If, you, yeah. if you're just not going to explain the difference between hard fork and soft fork, and um, you can also bring up the the civil war and backwards compatibility. Got you. Okay. So, uh, guys, so look, so Bitcoin has a, a lot of ad, ad, like a lot of advantages, right? With Ethereum, for example, uh, Ethereum 2.0, Ooh. they have to do, a, they have, it's basically, they say upgrade, but essentially it's a hard fork, right? Because they have to get every single node to upgrade to the new uh, system, right? With Bitcoin, it's not necessary because there's backward compat compatibility. So, for example, if you're running a Bitcoin Core software, uh, the, the latest is Bitcoin 20, uh, Bitcoin Core 20. If you're running 16, you could still uh, you can still talk with the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin Core 20. Right. So there's complete uh, backwards compa com compatibility in Bitcoin, right? And uh, Katie wanted me to bring up soft forks. So the cool thing about uh, Bitcoin and it being open source is that anyone could develop their own form of Bitcoin core. And there is actually other implementations, right? Uh, the thing is, is that you're going to have to play by the rules of, of other nodes that are operating. So you might be able to tweak some things here and there. But like, let's say you are like, I'm going to call it the Optimus, Optimus uh, Bitcoin Core node, right? It's and you node. just wanted to put it up to 22 million Bitcoins. Not the other node. nodes wouldn't accept that. <laughs> so you could totally do it. You could totally do it. But the other nodes wouldn't accept that. So it's, it's, it's literally one of the most unique and uh, robust things that bitcoin has is the fact of backwards compatibility versus other coins that need to upgrade as a whole right and the fact that with bitcoin it you don't you essentially don't have to hard fork right um because it's all about upgrading the nodes and they do that on their own time katie i hope i answered that um I as think, best I could. I think you did pretty well on that one. And uh, just for reference, as of now, I'm looking at a uh, Clark Moody's uh, Bitcoin dashboard, bitcoin.clarkmoody.com, and uh, it says that um, the the top node versions right now is uh, Satoshi 0 0.20, which has 24.9 percent of the network, and then uh, we even have. At the oldest that it has up there is a uh, 0.18, and it's got about 9.9 percent .9 of the network. So, roughly, you know, 10 percent of the of the network is still running old nodes, and and possibly even older nodes. It doesn't have all the data. So that's just like a, a literal example of what uh, backwards compatibility is about. But 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 that's what makes Bitcoin so robust, exactly. right? Exactly. And that's why uh, Bitcoin was able to win the war against the, these mining conglomerates and Roger Ver specifically because of the fact that it's not the mine. The miners are just basically paid security guards, right? That's basically what I do. I'm a paid security guard um, um, when I mine, right? And um, I'm expecting a lottery win, right? But the the nodes are the actual people dictating the rules of the network, right? And you could build and essentially what Satoshi wanted and what the Bitcoin core wanted is that they wanted different iterations of of the Bitcoin core, right? Because now we're just used to Bitcoin core 20, right? But essentially in a perfect world, what Satoshi wanted would be different iterations of nodes that that basically connect with each other and they have similar rules but they have like minute details between each other beautiful well uh be like oh yeah go jess for now go 
a good example of a soft fork is is SegWit, um, which which uh, you know short for segregated witness, um, and it allows you to maintain consensus with the rest of the network. So meaning that if someone was running the original version of Bitcoin Core, you wouldn't be interfering with the rules that they had already established. So we're still respecting the guy in the coma that's, you know, started running a Bitcoin node like at at inception. But now with SegWit, we're also adding some additional features so that we can save on transaction fees. And so we can group transactions together at a lower fee um, and get more. We're doing that. Um, so you you do have to make like, if you want to use SegWit, you have to make a certain upgrade. And so that would be taking advantage of the soft fork, but you're not interfering with the consensus rules of all of like the previous Bitcoiners and all the old nodes. So we're still respecting the man in the coma. Or, yeah. So we're, we're able to move forward, add features, um, and and not interfere with consensus at the end of the day. And there you go. Beautiful. Well, uh, boys and girls, uh, well, girl, but um, we've been going for almost two hours. And uh, Nico, we have a bunch of mining questions. So uh, are you going to come back next week? Of course, man. I'll All right, be cool. Here every week. All right, dope. So, uh, to the listeners and to the question questionnaire, uh, we'll we'll answer those mining questions next week because we got uh, a handful of them. So maybe we'll start off next week with some mining questions, and then um, yeah, super dope episode. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Uh, anyone want some last last thing to to close this episode out? Anything that was left unsaid? Yeah, thank thank you guys for, so much for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I love what you guys are doing. I love that you guys are educating, you know, um, and you guys are are spreading that Bitcoin knowledge. Thanks for coming out okay, and helping us do that. Yeah, you guys make the episodes and 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 this whole thing run. So thank you guys. And we're gonna get fucked up a bit, block. <laughs> 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 Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> uh, Jim, you unmuted yourself. You want to spread some last minute wisdom? Oh, no. Just wanted to say thanks. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, yeah, can't wait to hang out with everyone. All right. Well, thanks Jim. Out. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Love you, bro. Um, yeah, man. Any, Jackie, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. You want to you wanna do a shout out to, to all the commies out there? Uh, watch out commies you're all gonna die <laughs> good one <laughs> let's go oh my I God. mean they're still gonna die like starving but they're still alive I'll, I'll finish them what are, you, what are you talking about bro workers of the world unite oh my god nah <laughs> Jockey. <laughs> Jockey kills me. Oh man, Jockey. Yeah, you're you're my favorite man. Uh Coinacres, you wanna say some last words? Sure. Just uh you know, stack stats and uh be critical and uh you know, be curious, have fun. Love it. Yeah, as you can tell, even though we're all Bitcoiners, we don't all necessarily agree on the same things. But what we do agree on is that Bitcoin is the way. Uh, Jessifer, Katie? Yeah, all good. I, uh, I just wanted to say you guys need some special sound, too. You know how TFTC does all stuff. Oh, yeah. So let's come up with something. All right. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Nick will game plan that one. <laughs> Thanks, as always, for having me along. Uh it's uh it's awesome to spread the bitcoin knowledge and uh yeah do good things with it oh well thanks for being a part of this jessifer jessifer takes a lot of time to join us so shout out to jessifer uh 2a you want to say some last words no i thank you all for the for all the ideas that 
I get from the show. It's great. Keep second sets. Say no to shit coins and keep on stacking. <laughs> That's it. Oh, the stack sets? Uh, say humble stack sets in Spanish. Mantente humilde, acumula sats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good response, Katie. <laughs> uh, academic, thanks for coming out, bro. Hopefully you come out next week and uh, feel comfortable to come chat with us. And, you know, glad to have you. All right. Well, uh, I think on that note, guys, I'm going to end this recording. So uh, thanks for coming out, guys. We love you. Hopefully you learned a few things. And this is, I think, episode 16 of Bitcoin Kindergarten. And we'll be here every Thursday as long as blocks are coming in. So we'll probably be here, guys. All right. Peace. Peace. Boop, boop.